on tonight is going to kind of imitate what is going on down here just without all the watered down mess. You know, um, when I mean I repurpose, uh, basically the uh, frame is my neighbor's fence. I took that, chopped it up, uh, as here to, to here, and uh, all the paper that I use is basically found. You know, it's, it's either scrap or it's thrown away or you know, it's in the dumpster, it's in the recycling bin. Um, basically, I do my best to find stuff that I think I can definitely utilize and then turn it into something worthwhile and then you know, showcase it, exhibit it, and sell it. Um, and I've been doing this style for about four years or so. Uh, photo transfers are really interesting. Um, does anyone here work with photo transfer or know what it is? Um, basically, photo transfer is taking a Xerox copy. Um, what I have here is, I work with birds. That's my theme. That's my motif. Um, that's what I love. You know, um, I think it kind of resonates with everyone. Um, so, photo transfer basically is um, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna show you how to do it because it takes. Yeah, somewhere between 12 to 24 hours for it to dry. And I will keep you guys overnight. You know? <laughs> um, so Life basically, yeah, it probably costs too much. <laughs> you know? uh, but basically, it's a, uh, I, I cut this out, I find an image, I take it, I alter it, I Xerox it, I play around with it, and I manipulate it um, until, I, until like, I see some like really cool like characteristics in it. Uh, I don't like the image to be completely shown. I like spots to be like blown out, you know, and uh, some real heavy areas and some real lighted areas. So it's not just straight black and white, you know, so there are some gray areas in there too. Um, so I take that, I build up a background, pretty much like what you see down here. Um, and I'm also an experimentalist. So um, when I started, if you can imagine all this paper down here, was basically, you know, just like this, just, you know, straight out of a magazine, you know, um, it kind of has that, like, glossy feel to it, you know, mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really know, like, I didn't know what to expect, you know, um, so it's, it's almost like that magazine type of stuff, you know, so it's, it's shiny, kind of waxy, and, um, here to the paper, like, you know, if I put it down to the canvas, I don't know what's going to happen, you know. Um, but I mean, that's, that's the joy in, you know, uh, mixed media art. Uh, I, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. So I've been letting this transfer dry. I finished this piece at midnight. So I know this is an over 12 hours dry time. I don't know how that image is going to turn out. And I never know. Like, all these pieces up here were just by luck, you know. Um, I let each piece curate for about 12, 12 to 24 hours, you know. So uh, sometimes they turn out really beautiful, like those. I think these are some of my strongest, and sometimes they turn out really bad. But then the cool part about being an artist is we can always go back, you know, and you can alter and change the piece, you know, a hundred times. So I'm hoping this is going to be good, you know, because I don't want to let you guys down. Um, and what I did was I took acrylic paint and I basically washed it, you know, by just uh, real light tones, but then the paper started to bubble up, you know, um, and it started to, like, get this, like, film-like effect on it. And I really liked it, so I just kind of went with it, you know, um, and I put the transfer down. I put acrylic down first so you can see like uh, the image underneath. So there's gonna be some like light source in there. Um, basically, I used this stuff called uh, matte gel. It's Liquitex, I highly recommend it, it's awesome. Um, this stuff can stick to pretty much anything. You know, uh, it's great for acrylic base. It's not good for oil base, but um, I've been using this stuff for years. It's great for photo transfers. Uh, you know, uh, I had a uh, teacher that turned me on to mixed media back in, uh, like, yeah, when I was like a junior in college, 
and I've just been kind of going with it ever since. So, uh, you know, I only got a short time, so I'm going to try to, uh, you know, create as much as I can up into a stopping point, and then I'm going to show you basically how to get that image off. Because this is basically just paper that is gelled. And when you add water to it, that's when the paper dissolves and then you can start to see through the image. So it's really cool. It's a really cool thing. Um, so just give me one minute. So basically, All different kinds of stuff, you know. Like you can take this, you can add sand to it, you can add any kind of like thing, nature to it, <coughs> you know, to build up texture. So uh, <coughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of texture. I've always worked with it in plenty of pieces. And then I uh, basically, yeah, I just kind of play along the length of the canvas, you know. So it's like I kind of go into it. The thing with gel is I try to work. I try to work as fast as I can because I don't like stuff just to like sit around, you know, and I just get stagnant and dry. Uh, so I, I just try to build in as much, you know, as much as I possibly can. And uh, with a like, repurposed art, uh, the canvas I'm working on is. stretcher bar that was from a uh, silk screen, you know, so uh, found this piece in the dump at my old job, someone was going to toss it, I took it, you know, I uh, tore out the screen and, uh, you know, there you go, you know, you got something really cool to go off of, you know, so I basically just kind of, you know, it's, it's almost like painting. Gel is really fluid, you know, so that's, that's the thing about it. It's pretty forgiving, you know. Uh, again, you know, like you can go in and you can build up like plenty of different layers between each piece. And you can try to, yeah, try to avoid like the oxygen levels, you know, because, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, um, do a lot of people in here use acrylic? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, if you uh, water down too much acrylic, you start to get the oxygen bubbles, and then that kind of depletes the purpose of, you know, the paint itself, you know, like, um, you know, because the paint is a binder itself, you know, if you use gel or different mediums, it thickens the paint even more and makes it, to, you know, be able to bond to the piece. So what I try to avoid is the oxygen bubbles and getting air and too much water, you know, on the canvas itself. Yeah, because then the stuff is gonna you know, I think it can get pretty pretty bad pretty quick, you know. Um, and basically, you know, I just kinda I just kinda take all these uh, papers and I just kinda go with it, you know. Just kind of see what happens and you know, I'll I'll try not to bore you guys too much. You know, uh, a little bit about me, like I've been uh, I've shown at uh, Framations up at uh, any spot, you know, uh, a couple of years in the road, uh, that was back in, back in college, it was awesome, you know, uh, Framations helped me out a ton, you know, if you haven't shown there, then we suggest going, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a new father, I got a little 10 month old back at home, so that's pretty cool, you know, uh, it brings, it brings a lot of inspiration in my life, you know. So I absolutely love that. Yeah, we're hoping that he becomes an artist too. Yeah. Um, Do we have any doubt that he will become an artist? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, th I think he's a natural boy, you know. Uh, I 
I'm very chat for him, you know, he's a cool dude. Yeah. So, yeah, that, uh, I do a couple of festivals throughout the year. Um, I, my, next, uh, my next festival will be at uh, the Edwardsville Art Fair in Edwardsville uh, end of September. It's my first time showing in Edwardsville. Not so sure what to expect, but I know they have a really good art scene up there. So that should be really fun and exciting. You know, so always pleased to, uh, you know, to be able to be able to get the opportunity just to like show and do things like this and you know demonstrate. Yeah, you know, hopefully, you know, like you guys can like walk away from here with like something, you know, maybe like a cool idea or you know some aspect or something. Yeah. Um. Why don't you put the whole page on at one time? Uh, I like to build in uh, different layers. That's a good question. I like to build up uh, different layers. Um, if you if you look like before all this like before all that paint was built in there were uh, like strips of paper built up on top of other strips of paper, and like all these really cool, like intricate layers uh, that were just happening. And uh, the water, depending on the ink and depending on the paper, sometimes the water will eventually like get away, you know, at the paper. So you can get all these cool, like, transparencies. You know, um, it's a good question, you know. Like, I'm always open to questions. You know, you guys can, you guys can shoot away if you want, you know. Are you going to cover the whole canvas with the paper? I'm going to try. Oh. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of on a kind of on a tight, you know, tight time frame, but yeah, you know, uh, it's all good. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try. You know, uh, I just got to see what happens, and you know, if, uh, if I don't finish it here, you know, take it back to the studio and uh, just kind of just kind of go from there. And, But basically, um, I cover. I use a lot of gel in my work. Um, I like I like the body of it. You know, uh, I like how I can build up the layers really fast. And it's transparent. <coughs> you know, it dries transparent. So, um, like when the paper dries, the gel underneath it will dry. And you know, that acts as a glue. Uh, and you know, I can get these really awesome layers just through simple stuff like this, you know. So uh, uh, anybody here do like uh, live art or like demonstrations at festivals or anything? Do you know, like live art? I like festivals. Yeah. Uh, try it out. So it's really cool. Um, I've been doing I've been doing live art for a couple of years. Basically, you know, I use paper as my background, same as, you know, many artists would use, you know, like a solid tone in their, you know, like in their paintings. And, you know, I, I like to use different strips and different sizes and different sizes. Could you talk a little louder, please? Sorry. I, uh, you know, I like to uh, basically build up, like, different layers. Yeah, and, and I just kind of go off of like the size of the paper itself. I 
mean, if you guys got questions, you know, shoot away. Like, I'm totally used to people, like, interacting. And, yeah, I just gotta... I don't, I don't really have, like, a bubble. You know, like, when I do a live art, like, people come up to me and they talk to me and they interact, you know. Sometimes they'll even, like, participate in, like, the painting itself. You is know? this, yeah. this one that's, is the white object on top of the striations or mm -hmm. vice versa? Yeah. It's um, pasted on. This is, uh, underneath that is the Xerox, that what? is the Xerox piece, it's the, uh, oh, yeah. photo, it's the photocopy. So when I take away the paper, you're going to see the black, you're going to see the ink. Oh. And underneath this, I did a uh, quick layer of uh, white acrylic, just so the black doesn't blend into the oh. background. You're going to take that white off of there? That's going to be black. Yeah. I just want to, you know, <coughs> try to get this down real quick. Yeah. I'll show you. I'll show you. Some people do. Yeah, well, I'm some, not mad, but I think yeah. Yeah, so, some people call it deco. Uh, yeah, uh, I call it mixed media. I call it gel. Yeah, yeah. I mean bad gel. Yeah. Yeah, call it whatever. Yeah, call it what you want. Yeah. Well, in decoupage, you don't take off your what would be your paper layer. Right. right. Yeah, I don't know much about deco. So that's completely altered, you know. And then the image um, uses the color that's uh, pretty much made up of uh, the layers in the background, you know. Okay. Um, so I mean, I, I, I can't play around with the image itself first. I was just wondering if, if, there, if you had checked with anyone. If oh, yeah. So then, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, when I first started this style, I got like super nervous because I'm like, okay, like I'm totally taking from other people. But I, I mean, that's what some artists do. They take and they gain ideas from other people, and they kind of play around with that idea for a while. You know? um, so part of it is because you've made it your own. Yeah. It's not a strict duplication of yeah. the, the, the yeah. other art. Yeah. Like you'll see, this one, um, when I blew it up, um, parts of it are completely blown out. Mm -hmm. You know, so like the face is distorted, some of the wings are distorted, but you can still see, you know, the actual image itself. You know? So. Um, I'm going to put a couple more layers on this, and then we'll just see what happens next. <clears throat>
So this would be like, this is like step two or? This is step one. Maybe. Step one. Yeah, this is step one. Uh, step one can either be really drawn out, really long, yeah, um, depending on like how many layers they But you have to do your photo transfer thing first, don't you? Um, you know, I take the transfer and I play around with that for a couple of hours first. You know, I, I'll spend a couple of hours just kind of searching out images, um, drawing stuff out, you know, doing a lot of drawing and uh, just taking different images and just kind of manipulating them and just playing with them. You know, and just kind of seeing like what happens, you know, to that one piece. And, you know, when you're laying in the mirror from like this, Um, or is this just a, you're, you're building up a, it's sort of an answer. It's just I'm kind of building up. You know, I build it up first and then I have ideas on like where, you know, like where I want the piece to go. So even as you're carrying the paper, you... I have no clue. You don't know. Okay. No, I have no it's, idea. Well, that's what I can think. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of it. You know, it's like... Uh, Usually I carry around like a sketchbook and I'll, you know, I'll like draw out ideas, you know, but I mean, since this is like a live demo, I just kind of go off of like natural things. Yeah. So. So, so are you um, putting uh, smaller images or smaller torn pieces to the center for a center of interest? Or you yeah, center of interest. Um, I, also, I also believe that a text brings in the viewer. Yeah, I, I think text is a really strong uh, image itself. You know, so I think that kind of guides the viewer into the piece. Um, and all of the text I use, I try to make sure that it's like relevant to the artwork itself. You know, like this is all stuff from like a bird book that I found in some antique shop. You know, so I try to make sure that it's relevant. So you're not going to paint over that? Um, maybe. No. Okay. I might. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it might have. So how many layers of paper do you put on? Uh, I, I would have dragged it for like 10. Yeah. 10? 10? I would have dragged it. You're going to run out of time tonight. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm planning on doing the transfer for you guys. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm on I'm on. Um, so basically, you know, it's like, I, I mean, you know, you can start to see like some really cool like tones happening, you know, like different like under layers, you know, uh, because like behind each piece, you know, there, there might be like another image and there might be like other text and, um, depending how much uh, gel I put down, like, you know, you can start to see like some real cool like gray tones happening. And then uh, normally what I'll do is I'll, I'll either like leave the piece um, alone, like the background, or I'll stain it completely like that. So you can still see some text that's built in, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of on this new series of like just black, kind of gray backgrounds, you know, and, and just a white you know, transfer with black ink. Um, I think the barn wood's pretty nice. I think that's a pretty nice touch. You know, uh, I didn't have to pay. What's that? It goes with your gray. It does. You know, like, um, I didn't have to pay anything for it. You know? Right, yeah. You know, so... Do you have an idea where your image is going to go? Um, normally, I'll go... It, it kind of depends on the image itself, you know. Uh, yeah. If it's a pretty uh, dominant piece, yeah. I'll try to go not dead center, but maybe more like uh, off center, or like this piece is further to the right. Lately, um, a lot more of my stuff has been kind of uh, more in the right section for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. You can't feel that off yet, can you? I'm going to right now. Are you? Yeah. yeah, I'll show you. So. And the cool thing about uh, this gel is. Um, I think it should be a lot of things. Yeah, uh, this wood is uh, entirely uh, stuck on there with that gel. You know? So 
it acts as a binder, you know, it's, it's a real heavy glue, you know. Um, I basically, like, I put it on some, like, really thick layers of it, and then I just kind of clamped it down, and I let that sit for about a good 12, 15 hours. Um, the wood itself is really fragile, you know, so I like it. I think it's, a, I think it's really cool. Basically, now I'm going to show you how the uh, transfer happens. You know, uh, it might be a lot of time you're using knives. You know, you know, you know, I've seen this before. You know, uh, it, it's a really cool process. Like the first time I did it, I had no clue what I was getting into. Um, my teacher just you know, showed me the, you know, just the outline. And I'm just like, I didn't understand how if I put gel down, I put paper down, how it's wanting to pull it off, you know, it's just like, you know, you just, just cover the base layer, you know, you, know, you cover the, you know, you cover the base layer, which is the bottom, you know, and then you put some gel on the piece itself, and then uh, you basically, you know, give it a certain drive time, somewhere between 12, 24, um, I've let some pieces go 36 hours, you know, and you get like a really crisp, you know, so this piece is at least uh, give or take maybe 18 hours. You know, that's been sitting. So uh, could you ever do transfers with color photos? I've tried. I've tried, and uh, I have not had a lot of luck. You know. So as you can see right now, like you know, the water is like starting to seep through. over that white image? No. No, I just try to make sure that the, uh, that when I like, when I put the image down, uh, I try to make sure that the piece itself is, you know, it's flat. You know, like I take a palette knife and then I kind of, can you see that? You know? I take a palette knife, I try to smooth it out as much as I can and I try to get rid of this as much like, oxygen bubbles as I possibly can. You know, um, my wife, I got my wife onto this process. She really loves it, you know. Uh, I hope my kid really likes it, you know. I know he likes watching the paper, you know. But, you know, <laughs> so that's really fun, you know. Um, and, you know, and I basically just kind of water it down and just kind of go off, go off of that. And, you know, like, when you look at the brush, you can see, like, the particles Tell like where I need to go back. I need 
to like alter, you know, like different parts of it. Um, that's not because uh, there wasn't enough gel in that region or I scraped too hard, you know. Basically, just take your brush and just water your brush down, and basically, it'll just pull. You know, you don't have to scrape it all sometimes. You know, like, you know, if you're lucky enough, like the brush will pretty much do the work for you. You can even leave some of it on there. Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, so that's probably a stiff bristle. Pieces I, I I do add color. Um, I'll I'll basically I'll like when this piece is dry, um, I will I'll seal it with gel first, and then I'll go in with uh, yeah I'll probably start with like a marker like a water based marker first and uh, yeah just kind of go go with that and just kind of see what happens. So my thing is, uh, you know, if I'm happy with the piece and I like it and I kind of like the blown out edges, um, I'll just kind of go with it, you know. Um, it's like, I know what I have in mind, I know the image, I know what the image is like in my mind, like I know when I start to pull the paper off, I know what is underneath there, you know, but I don't know what's going to happen as soon as I start the process, you know? So, yeah, trial error, you know, like, yeah. I, I, I think 
we all know how that goes. Like, There's no way you can take it all off in one piece. No. I've tried. I think that's the beauty of it, you know, like, just kind of watching the piece itself form, you know. And then, you know, I'll, like, try to you know, clear off the area as best as I can. I 
kind of go off of, you know, like, I'll go off of people's feedback first, you know, like, I'll ask, you know, my wife, I'll ask my friend, I'll post it on Facebook, um, you know, I'll ask my kid, you know, he's 10 months, you know, he'll kind of babble off something, like, okay, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, and, and sometimes I just kind of go off of, you know, just instinct, you know, so, um, Yeah, you know, like I'll uh, I'll do all the framing. For, I just got into framing recently. Yeah, you know, uh, ne never really tackled it before. I have no no clue. Like it's harder than it sounds. Yeah, it? yeah, it, it's it's really tr it's really tricky. Um, but you know, it's like so uh, when I'm done, I kind of did this in reverse order. You know, like first I'll do the layers, and I'll, I'll you know, and then I'll like build in like the different tones and. Like subtleties, um, and then I'll do like like the transfer, yeah, and then I just kind of go off of that. You know? That's cool. And I got business cards. And I have a lot more stuff on my, you know, uh, just to share social media, Facebook, and all that. Oh, and, uh, sure, sure, sure. Did you get to see? Yeah, we did. Nice. Well, yeah. Really yeah. Good. One thing that you'd like to pass down on your style of art that would be the most important piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, about my style of art? Mm -hmm. um, piece of advice to pass it down? I think just to, you know, just to be able to like explore with different mediums. You know, uh, I mean, I use mixed media, you know, um, I like it because I'm really no, there's no boundary, you know, where it's just oil, or it's just acrylic, or it's just watercolor. Um, I say, you know, just explore, you know, uh, just explore the different, uh, you know, like, the different, like, mediums that, you know, you feel comfortable using, or, like, see how far you can take that medium, or maybe, you know, if you're working with oil, maybe you build in different layers with, uh, you know, collage or something. You know, it's, it, I, you know, like, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a big experimentalist, so, um, yeah, I, I always just kind of challenge people just to keep pushing it, you know, and just see, like, how far they can actually take the piece itself. Great. You know, um, well, a big round of applause for Tim. Thank you very much. Focused in North St. Louis County, Northside Art Association is a nonprofit 501c3 arts organization that serves local artists through community exposure, networking, education, and peer interaction. Learn more about Northside Art Association at www.northsideartassociation.org. <laughs>